In this video, we will be covering the part two questions, number 25 through 31 of the geometry regions from June, 2022. All right, 25, the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy is known for its slant, which occurred after its construction began. The angle of the slant is 86.03 degrees from the ground. The low side of the tower reaches a height of 183.27 feet from the ground. Determine and state the slant height x of the low side of the tower to the nearest hundredth of a foot. We are going to be using Sokotoa from this problem. Given the 86.03, this is our opposite side where we have the height. The adjacent side is the bottom, and we are looking for that slant height, that hypotenuse. So since there's something written on the O side for opposite and the H side for hypotenuse, we are going to be using so, the sine part of Sokotoa. So the sine of 86.03 is equal to 183.27 over x. Let's put that over 1 and cross multiply. And then we are going to divide in order to isolate the x. And let's put that in our calculator. So we have 183.27 divided by the sine of 86.03. And we are rounding to the nearest hundredth or two decimal places and we got 183.71 feet. 26, in the diagram below, quadrilateral ABCD is inscribed in circle O and we're given the ratio of all of the arcs. Anytime you're given ratios, Rather than label CD with 2, let's label it with 2X. So we're going to kind of match up the two pieces that are listed first. So CD, we're going to put 2X. DA, we're going to put 3X. AB will be 5X, and so will BC. So before we actually do some work to figure out the measure of angle B, we have to figure out what these arcs are. Well, we know that in a circle that we have six, uh, 360 degrees, so we're going to add all of these arcs up to 360. That gives us 15x equals 360. Divide 360 uh, by 15, and we get x is 24. Now, we're going to plug 24 back in for each of those arcs. So this arc here that was 2x is really going to be 48 degrees once I plug 24 in. The 3x is really going to be 72 degrees. So again, I'm just plugging in x, uh, 24 in for x in order to get that arc measure. The remaining two arcs, they are equal to each other. And when I plug 24 in, I get 120 for each of them. All right, well, angle B is an inscribed angle, which is always half the measure of its intercepted arc. So let's check out what that arc is. If I make angle B really big, here is the intercepted arc. So the intercepted arc is the sum of 72 and 48, which is 120. And then let's divide that by 2. So 120 divided by 2. And the measure of angle B comes out to be 60 degrees. 27. In the diagram below, a right circular cone has a diameter of 10 and a slant height of 13. Determine and state the volume of the cone in terms of pi. You would definitely go right to your reference sheet for this to grab the volume formula. So here it is. And let's start plugging in. The radius is 5, but there's this extra piece here. We're looking for the height. We are not given the height in this problem. We're given the slant height, which is different. The height is basically the altitude of the cone. It goes from that peak at the top straight down to the center. And it is perpendicular to the base. What happens when we do that, if we look at this, we basically have a right triangle. The base is 5 because it's halfway across, and the hypotenuse is 13. If I do Pythagorean theorem, or if I know my Pythagorean triples, that's going to make this slant height, uh, the vertical height, excuse me, 12. Now we want this in terms of pi, so we're going to type this into our calculator, except we are going to uh, not put pi in the calculator. We're just going to keep it in our answer. 
That's what you're gonna do anytime you do in terms of pi. So I got 100 and we're gonna put pi in our answer here. And we have the volume of this cone is 100 pi. 28, in the diagram below, parallelogram EFGH is mapped onto parallelogram IJKH after a reflection over line L. Use the properties of rigid motions to explain why parallelogram EFGH is congruent to parallelogram IJKH. Well, when you have a reflection, Reflection is an example of a rigid motion. So I'm going to start off by saying that. So I'm going to say a reflection is a rigid motion. And the question honestly implies that a little already. Um, so we just have to explain the properties of the rigid motion then. So a reflection is a rigid motion. And a rigid motion preserves distance and angle measure. You could also use the phrase, it preserves size and shape. That would be the same idea. So the distance is all the side lengths, the angle measures are the same then as well. So therefore the parallelograms are congruent. If this question was given to us and it talked about a rotation or a translation, it would really be the same exact answer because those are just other examples of rigid motions. 29, Izzy is making homemade clay pendants in the shape of a solid hemisphere as modeled below. Each pendant has a radius of 2.8 centimeters. How much clay to the nearest cubic centimeter does Izzy need to make 100 pendants? Well, the formula sheet, your reference sheet, does not have a hemisphere formula on it. It has a sphere formula. So you have two options when you are finding the volume of a hemisphere. You could either take that volume formula from your reference sheet and then divide your answer by two. Or what I like to do is just have that fraction. So instead of four thirds, make it two thirds and now find the volume. So we know that the radius is 2.8. And we want the volume of 100 of them. And now I'm just going to type all of this into my calculator. So 2 thirds pi, 2.8 cubed. Careful, this is a cubed. And I'm going to times that by 100. We are rounding to the nearest cubic centimeter, which means the nearest whole number. So I get 4,598 centimeters cubed as the volume of all 100 pendants. 30. Determine and state the coordinates of the center and the length of the radius of the circle whose equation is x squared plus y squared plus 6x equals 6y plus 63. I'm going to start by rearranging this a little bit. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the x terms next to each other. So I am just going to flip. Um, let's actually draw that this way. I'm going to just flip these two pieces. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the y's together. Since the y term 6y is on the other side, I really need to subtract it over. So it becomes a negative. And now I'm going to use the process of completing the square. So after both x terms, I'm going to leave a little blank space. After both y terms, I'm going to leave a little space. And since I put two spaces on the left, I'm going to put two spaces on the right to keep the equation balanced. To figure out what goes in that space, we're going to look at the coefficients of the x and the y terms, divide it by 2, and square it. So if I take 6, divide by 2, I get 3, square it, and I get 9. We're going to put plus 9 in there. We want that plus to keep it a polynomial. Negative 6, you're going to get positive 9 as well. It doesn't matter that it's negative because once you square the negative 3, you'll get a positive back. And I'm going to add the 9s to the other side. Now you're going to look at these three pieces independently and factor. Over on the right-hand side, just add 63 plus 9 plus 9. 
Anytime you factor or you're multiplying something by itself, that's the same thing as squaring it. So I'm going to rewrite it as these pieces squared, and that's going to make my equation of the circle in center radius form. And now to find the center, I'm going to take the opposite of the numbers in the parentheses. So that gives me negative 3, 3 as my center. For the radius, I'm going to take the square root of 81. So my radius is 9. So my center is negative 3, 3. Radius is okay for number 31. We have a construction. It says use a compass and straight edge to construct a line that is parallel to AB that goes through point C as shown below. All right, the first thing we're going to do, I'm using my safety compass um, and I'm going to use it as a straight edge as well. So if you have a regular compass, have a straight edge nearby. The first thing I'm going to do is draw a nice big transversal here. So the transversal is this line that will ultimately be going through the two parallel lines. And now I'm ready to start. Okay. All right, I'm going to bold this intersection point from the original line and our transversal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the little gold ring, this piece here, of my compass on that point. And I'm going to Pick one of the letters in my compass so that it basically draws an arc that crosses through um, the two parts of this angle, like the two rays. Okay. And I want us to remember what size we're using. I'm going to use this very first one that's before D. And if you want, you could always put like a little note on your paper just to remind yourself what you use. So I used before D. All right, where that arc hit the transversal. I'm just going to bold that point. Ideally, if it's under the original point C, that's great. That makes this just a little cleaner. So there's no overlap here. I'm going to put the gold piece of my compass on that point. And I want to find the hole in my compass that lines up with the other. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm measuring how far apart these two points are. So with the gold piece on one, this one looks actually really good here, this very first arc. And I'm gonna draw an arc through it, okay? So I use like before C. Now we're gonna repeat the process. We are going to put the gold piece on point C and I'm gonna use the two arcs that we already did. So the first one I did was the one before D. I'm gonna make a nice big arc, big enough so that it crosses the transversal. Put the gold piece on there. Now use the hole that's before C. Where those two meet, connect with point C using a straight edge. And now you have your parallel line. Here's what we basically did. When you have two parallel lines and you have a transversal, the corresponding angles are congruent to one another. So what we basically did is we made two corresponding angles that are congruent and that in turn made the lines parallel.